Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, I'm going to be sitting down with my friend Darth Microtransaction. We've both had an opportunity to play a lot of New World since it has been released, so I wanted to give you my perspective on some of the long-term projections. Do we think this game is going to be successful or not? Do we like it or dislike? What's the good and the bad? And get you some first impressions from some uh, raid community players about this new MMORPG, Amazon's New World, because it's a pretty big release, so I wanted to at least give you my thoughts on that and bring someone else to talk about their perspective as well. So let's get into it. Alrighty, well then, uh, now I'm joined by Mr. Darth Micro himself, who's had some crazy times uh, recently. I guess you have moved and stuff. How you doing, man? How you holding up? I'm holding up, man. I'm a little bit tired. I will admit that moving takes it out of you in a way that nothing else seems to do. But I, you know, yeah, no, I'm hanging on. And to be honest, I'm quite happy, actually, because the place that I have since moved to is significantly better than my previous spot. So that's keeping me in spirits. How far did you move? Um, From my old place, I'm about 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So we did like the exact same thing. I moved, but barely... Uh... Barely, like, uh, probably about three months ago, so. Interestingly enough, I'm, like, four houses down from my parents. And, uh, because they're getting older, I'm like, oh, you know, moving somewhere close. But I found the exact type of house I wanted, and it was close to them. And I don't have to pay utilities here. So, like, electric and all that stuff that I just gobble up with all the computers and lights. You know how it is with our oh, job. Yeah. Is, don't have to cover that. And it's got a jacuzzi and all this stuff. So, I'm actually, like, pretty stoked. Yeah, wow, that's... That's awesome. I'm happy for you, man. You finally settled in and ready to rock then back to normal? Out of the ghetto, baby. Out of the ghetto. <laughs> there we go. Well, I, I brought you on today to, uh, I know, uh, I didn't want to do this type of video by myself because, um, I don't have as much perspective on this type of open world RPG. My expertise is more in strategy games like StarCraft or, sure, yeah. or, or the, or, or the Diablo. straight, yeah, the straight up RPGs yeah. like Diablo, uh, World of Warcraft, RuneScape, New World, not my expertise, admittedly. Um, well, we have kind of a, we have a, a yin and yang here then because games like StarCraft, like RTS games, I've played since I was a kid, like with Command and Conquer, you know, watch my dad play Dune actually. I'm talking like the original ones, but um, I'm not good at them, nor do I know them well, nor have they been the type of game I focused on. However, open world MMOs always have been because when I was a kid, I've, I've always been a fairly social person. Like I get lonely easy. I like talking to people all the time. It's probably why I talk a lot. I don't know. Right. And so, uh, I always from, from being a kid, like since 2001, you know, I played RuneScape and every MMO I could get my hand on, like, wow, since classic, uh, RuneScape. I never, I was too young for EverQuest, but you know, I tried Guild Wars, Guild Wars 2, I played Eve, I, you know, every, every major MMO you can basically list, I got into, and I have kind of a focus and love for, uh, player-driven economies, sandboxes, housing, like, I think Star Wars Galaxies and RuneScape were probably my two favorite, like, the original Star Wars Galaxies. Okay, cool. Yeah, and and now that we've had a chance to kind of see the, the the dust settle and and sink our teeth in a new world, um, I wanted to kind of give our dual perspectives here. I guess we'll we'll start with you. You're the guest. What what's your overall perspective after kind of sinking your teeth in a new world here? Well, I think we should probably start with just an overall arcing feeling, like you're saying. So generally, I'm enjoying it. I am approaching it from the atmosphere of. Um, I haven't had time lately in my life to be able to just play games that I want to do because, you know, we do it for work now. And weirdly enough, when you do it for work, you actually end up playing video games less. And so it's I, I'm approaching it from that mentality. Like I want to play it for fun. I'm not trying to be the best. I won't have time to be the best, even if I could. I just want to play with my friends and have fun. Casual, for lack of a better term. And so far, it has filled that goal extremely well. From the point of view for me, I've been, you know, as a casual person, just want to log in, have fun, do what I want to do and not be put down a linear path because that's something I care about is I like the openness. It has to be actually open world. I don't like linear path games. That's why I didn't like Star Wars Fallen Order. Hated it, right? It's because you get forced down certain directions. Um, and so for, from because of that, 
to give you your my elongated answer on your very short question, I'm really enjoying uh, my entry and introduction to the game. About level 36, 37 right now. Oh, that's that's really good. You're you're ahead of me. Um, I think if I, I can pull mine up on screen here, I am uh like level twenty eight, but I've got really good trade skills. Um, yeah. I like I'm a hundred and twenty nine mining, hundred and one smelting, hundred harvesting. Like I'm a hundred hundred in three different areas. Um, so I like the the enjoyment I get out of these types of games is the uh, obviously. No one's gonna be shocked by this. The market, like, uh, like, like trading and the auction house and uh, buying and selling and flipping and uh, managing my finances and trying to kind of acquire wealth uh, is so the big selling point on a game like this for me is the economy and the auction house and the market. Sure. Um, I, I, I love having like spreadsheets of like, this will make you the most gold per hour off of what, of what you farm. Like that's the type of stuff that kind of piques my interest. Um, yeah. so that's what I spent most of the time doing. I would say the first like three days I was super stoked, uh, when the game was new and the economy was fresh and things were buying and selling and, and shaking. Um, and then after it really calmed down, I, I noticed like how am I, like there is really no economy anymore once the server because in a game like diablo 3 like i come from everyone in the world plays together like you're just you're just there like you can log in and play with me right now it doesn't matter server it doesn't matter how long ago this server was created so this is a new experience for me do you think that's going to be a long-term issue or so i i don't believe it's going to be a long-term issue you're correct in stating it's currently an issue i would agree i don't see any problems with that point i don't think it's going to continue to be a problem going into the further future and i can say because i've experienced what is a fresh economy in these type of games where players acquire everything and it's crafting based games um, for instance in runescape there's something called dead man mode which is seasonal every season starts completely fresh server and it's open world pvp and Dead Man Mode actually reminds me very much of uh, New World. It's very similar play styles because what you have is people from the beginning focusing like I'm only going to do wood cutting, only mining, whatever, and getting those skills and then trying to sell it. Now, where this comes into the economy and why I'm not worried about coming into the future is because in the beginning of those games and the beginning of a fresh economy, gold has an extremely evaluated sense of importance the gold itself is extremely important at the beginning of any game and is hyper inflated so you can get almost anything for low gold values most of the time because you need gold for some static amount of gold to acquire something and everyone's trying to level and acquire the new things an example of this would be at, uh, like buying housing in the game. It's essentially a gold sink in the game, removing gold permanently from the game. So there's less of it coming in than is going out at the moment, making gold so scarce to the point that everyone needs it, driving the price of everything down. So I, it's not that these items aren't needed. We all need the items. Everyone's trying to level and people are buying the items to turn them in for the quest. It's just that the gold is so highly valued at the moment, people aren't willing to part with it, driving prices down. Plus, there's the combined issue of players can't join the world currently, which we were talking about earlier. Yeah, because like I've got it pulled up in game right now, and like I remember um, at the like the trading post, it used to have so many people there that you couldn't even see anybody's name. Um, and now, like right now in my game, there's two people there at the trading post and it used to be like hundreds just flocked around it when I, f so things were really moving. Um, now it's, it's much more settled down and calm. Um, what's your take on that? Cause it, it feels like there's not an influx of like, of like things going on. Well, I think it, I think uh, events and things happening on the map change a lot of where people are at times, things like upcoming wars, uh, invasions, uh, different events, and the overall overarching people's level. For instance, Everfall was probably the most important spot on our server in the beginning, right next to Monarch's Bluff. However, as time's going on, Purple, who's the dominant force, 
moved on from the lower level ones and started claiming the higher level ones. And that's where the majority of the people were rushed. So it's sort of a rolling over. Like I think the trading posts, etc., are going to be become more popular at the higher level ones as the vast majority of the populace becomes higher. The other problem is because new players aren't allowed on the server and the, and people are either quitting, getting bored of the game, or just some people, this ain't my type of game, whatever, you know. The new people are joining new servers, not old servers. So we're seeing people leave, but they can't literally come in. So there is no world in which we live in which things would become more popular at the moment. It's it's not factually possible just due to the way they have the server set up. So I'm really not worried about the long-term economy because in most player-driven economies, things end up balanced. Like I played EVE, I played RuneScape, and most of these things will end up being okay. You can ruin economies for sure, but I don't think we're at that issue yet. I think most of these, there's not that many resources. It will get bought up when more players get into it, et cetera. So, yeah, an example of an economy being ruined would be when I played Diablo 3 in the early days of its release, uh, the botting. Blizzard just could not stop it. So the market got flooded with way more gold and items than players needed because, like, the, yeah. there's, there's way too many bots compared to like players buying things so it just trashed the market so if you were a real player you would farm for 12 hours and make like five cents worth of stuff <laughs> so both runescape <laughs> and wow has have had these exact issues yeah and um you know it, the more important the player driven economy the more often you're going to see the companies focusing resources on anti-botting techniques from what i've seen and I and yeah, that goes in this game. Well, and then there's also the theory of like uh, Blizzard isn't incentivized to get rid of the bots because every time they do a ban wave, all those bot accounts have to buy new accounts. So it's like it's like printing it's like printing millions of dollars. Do a ban wave, boom, they all buy new accounts, and we just printed two million dollars. They do ruin the average gamer's income as they're leveling. So the first time you're playing through an MMO bots ruin that experience because you should be able to take resources from your first level through and be able to sell them to at least have income for skills and stuff like that in these type of games and bots drive down prices so much to the point like you're saying that we're experiencing on our current game where you don't make any money at all while you're leveling through it through the auction house and selling stuff to other players which can ruin the experience too i do think they're going to get they're going to get their hands on this one they've been addressing um the majority of the issues it seems like this game has i mean the auto running the cues etc they've been addressing it the game is fun i am currently still very feeling very optimistic about it i've played 70 hours now i think maybe a little bit more into it and every time i log in i'm still having a good time and i just log off when i'm not so it so far i feel okay the economy there's something to be said there i mean you're not wrong there's there's something wrong there but it, i think i think it's going to level out with time how uh how will how, how will the 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 not being able to allow players how will that get fixed because like they blo they locked servers so that like like let's say you are streaming and you got viewers they want to come play with you they can't they physically can't so how does that get fixed well i think it's locked until after server transfers more than likely they said they were going to be doing server transfers in two weeks after the launch we're just about there i think so we are more than likely going to be getting server transfers and people are going to be settling into the servers. I would imagine by that point that we, all the new servers that have been popping up will all be established. They'll probably unlock things and the flow will have calmed down. They'll have fixed the auto running issues, etc. So the queue shouldn't be as bad. From my understanding, the queue problem, um, which is the reason for stopping people from being able to get in there, was compounding with multiple issues, many of which have been addressed since then. So hopefully when it unlocks and players can start playing, it's going to change things because a large part of what this game is, is uh, a derivative of their Twitch streaming publications. They, they have Twitch plugins directly into the game where you can see someone's a Twitch streamer joining their army, all that stuff. I don't know if they have it implemented yet because I can't seem to get it to work on mine. I don't know if you've been able to get it work for you. I can't get my Twitch well, stuff to sync. Like, well, sometimes when I'm on the main menu, it'll show my, uh, nope. and sometimes Your it name. won't. Yeah, exactly what I have. 95% of the time, it doesn't show Darth microtransaction, but every random, every now and then randomly I'll log in and it shows me my name. I'm like, oh, it's working. And then I never see it again. Yeah, same. So like I, I implemented it or whatever. Like right now it's not showing. Um, I just checked. Yeah, so I, 
Yeah, top no way, top yeah. right. Sometimes it shows Cho Fly chosen, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's a little bit a little bit weird for sure. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, very frustrating. I don't know if it's something like you have to be both live as well as streaming in that category before you turn on the stream or something. I don't know, but they don't explain it very well, which I also think is a problem because uh, the streamers are sort of going to be probably pushing influxes of people to servers. I also think it wasn't a very well thought out system where it's like we're going to have a 2000 person cap. But the entire point of it is these wildly popular streamers are going to bring large amounts of their fans into their thing obviously making a queue in 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 bulk quick you know quick flux of people problems and then the servers weren't designed for it so i think there was a little bit a, a lack of foresight there but i'm willing to allow for it because most mmos if not everyone i can remember is has server problems on launch this is something that literally always happens yeah yeah and like i was saying in uh in my i think my daily video i talked about it but like it's basically just the industry norm that the first week is just an absolute mess in every yep. in every big release that comes out. You you might as well, like I feel bad when people on launch day like take time off work and like line up all these and use vacation time and then you just sit there and you can't even play the whole day. It, it, so it's <laughs> I see it like Black Friday, dude. It's like if you want to get in and get early and try to get like the advantage and all that, dude. God God willing, you can get it, but it's like. Dude, it's going to be an absolute cluster when you get in there. Like, it's going to be, and you're probably going to end up with some bruises and pissed off with a bunch of other people by the end of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's more than likely what's going to happen. Yeah, it kind so, of, that's, that's a perfect yeah. analogy, uh, Black Friday, because I, 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 I'm in the same, I just don't even bother. I'm like, you know what? I'll pay $10 more and I'll get it the next day. <laughs> I'm not camping. I'm not camping three days for a toaster, dude. It doesn't make any sense. Like, and the thing is, I've worked at Best Buy not once, but twice, sad to admit. And during those times in college when I worked at that Best or those two different Best Buys, dude, I had to work through Black Friday. And let me tell you, the level of animal that comes out for those type of thing is just, it's just stupid. I mean, I've seen people come out with tents, literal multi days before to buy a six hundred dollar TV for like two hundred bucks. It's like they'll come out with tents. It's like I am working at Best Buy. I'm not making a lot of money. I would not try to save four hundred dollars by camping outside. But I'm in Alaska. You know how cold it is up here. Think about it when Black Friday is stupid, dude. Yeah. No, I. I'm with you there. I don't understand it. I've I've never in my life but braved the trampling crowds and stuff. But anyway, the original Zero point. Sense. The original. Well, first of all, why'd you get fired from Best Buy? I did not get fired. I quit both times. <laughs> you like how I just assumed there? <laughs> I did. You did. I see you slipping that little bit of shade in there. All right, next rap video. Cho Fly Elite diss incoming. Your next uh, clickbait thumbnail. Cho Fly Elite attacks me for assuming I got fired. The next reason I quit Ray, the revealed here, personal friend attacks. Yeah, don't call me a hacker on another thumbnail, though. Oh, come on now. Show fly, fly Elite confirmed hacker. Well, you, you made me religious. You put me as Jesus, so you're... <laughs> All right, so I think I, uh, I, I, you, you talked me off the ledge a little bit. I was getting pretty yeah. down on, I was getting pretty down on New World because it was so exciting the first three days, and I saw it kind of like Still peter, good game. like peter out. Um, so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll continue to monitor it and kind of see how it's going. Cause I know you're, uh, you're pretty hopeful. Not only that, man, but it's like, uh, y you can always play the margins. Like everything's a percentage with auction house, right? It was the same way in RuneScape. And I made a lot of money in that game, buying and selling as well as staking like that. I used to be somewhat known in RuneScape before I did the whole mobile game thing. And I, I did a lot of buying and selling. And you can always play margins by playing the the variation between the buy orders and the sell orders and the gap between the min and the max, right? Yeah. And so the problem with this game is in order to do that, you have to max your faction reps uh, trading tax decrease at the main hub where you're going to trade and everywhere else. So it does kind of incentivize you to only be able to buy and sell and play the markets at the higher faction levels, which is kind of a bummer. So you'll probably feel better later in the game when you have most of that decreased and you can play the margins and make more money on flipping easier, I would think, since that's really what you're enjoying. That's probably why you're feeling a little depressed right now. The, that part of the game you like right now is probably at its worst.
Well, and and the fact, like the two main reasons I play, I wanted to play the game were community, like like doing stuff with your friends and inviting people to yeah. your server, and that was locked down because nobody yeah. could join, and then the economy, and that kind of petered out. So basically, the two reasons I wanted to play were like, uh, <laughs> I agree, and you know, it's annoying, but I think with time we're going to be okay. I think we got to give it a little bit. Cool. Well, hey, I appreciate you uh, taking the time uh, after your move to kind of collab with me. It's been a while. No problem, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on, as always. And yeah, now, uh, can I ask you how you're liking your place now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah no, I like it. Um, I haven't gotten to get as much work done as I would like. My studio is not complete. It's probably like 60% done. Um, but yeah, I like it. It's definitely... So basically what I did was I moved from a one-bedroom to a two-bedroom. So I used to work in my living room. Um, and now I actually have like an mm -hmm. office. So... Uh, it's it's nice because you, you don't you actually feel like you're going to work and you actually ha you feel like you have a home like I have a living room yeah um so yeah it, you know I used to whenever uh you know people would come over family or anything you've got your whole equipment right there next to yeah, the couch your wife <laughs> yeah. and all that stuff <laughs> everything's and... everything's right there next to the couch you're like sitting in my studio it was just kind of it's, it's nice to have an actual home again so no I feel that man I was kind of saying the same thing. Um, because this is a, it's got a loft, which is kind of almost like a second story. Cause it's basically a house. It's just, I have to not smash my head. You can walk in the middle, but it's got, you know, it's like this. So if I walk on the sides, you know, being six foot one, I can hit my head. I gotta be kind of careful. But it, the upstairs is all my living stuff. And the downstairs is like the office. So it's like I work and then I go upstairs. And like you're saying, it's like, it's nice to have that kind of separation, you know, yeah. where it's like you have work and then you're home. Yeah. But it's why at my last place, cause I thought about just uh, having my like uh, station in my bedroom because it was big enough but I was like then I'm gonna wake up work in my bedroom and I'm gonna feel like I never even left my bedroom and it's gonna be a miserable existence so at least if I put everything in the living room I'll like leave my bedroom and have a work day yep. <laughs> so no, it's important to do that dude I used to like sleep on the floor next to my computer and just like wake up and get back to work and that is like if you ever want to feel like you're in a box just working non-stop <laughs> in a cage like a monkey like that's how you do it. You sleep right next to your chair and then you just get up and start the grind again. I didn't even know what day it was most time or what time. Just get up, make a video, hit publish. I had a, uh, uh, man. Uh, I had a StarCraft tournament like that um, where you, you play all day and then people literally brought, brought like sleeping bags and you would just pull your chair out, sleep, <laughs> sleep under your desk and then you'd wake up in the morning. Okay, where's my next match? Because there's like hundreds of is. hundreds of people there for like a weekend tournament and everybody just sleeping under their desk and stuff. But yeah. The grind, man. Good times. <laughs> there's some nostalgia in this conversation. Yeah, that's right. All right, brother. We'll, uh, right, we'll, we'll game it up soon. Sounds good. All right, bye see bye, ya. everybody. All righty, so a huge shout out to my friend Darth Micro for taking the time to join me. Always fun to sit down and chat about uh, about games in general with him. So I will link to his channel down below. Definitely worth checking out. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.